but I did try an edible uh, for, oh. the fir- <laughs> for, <laughs> for the first time. Yeah, and I, and I re- remember just walking around the casino just like real happy. And welcome back to another episode of Asian Not Asian Podcast, a podcast where two Asian guys not from Asia talk about American issues no American cares about. I'm your host, Fumi Abe. And I'm Mike Nguyen. Today is uh, Saturday, July 24th. We're coming at you live from all over the world, uh, truly. Literally all over the world. This is an insane one. So crazy. And we'll get to that in a second. Um, But before we start, if you're listening to this on your iPhones, please uh, take a screenshot, post it on your Instagram stories, tag us at Asian Not Asian Pod, tell your friends about it. That's how we get bigger. And um, also leave a review um i it's we are literally coming from all over the world because mike you're in new york uh our guest is in london i am in hawaii and it's 6 30 in the morning right now and uh <laughs> my wi-fi sucks ass at the airbnb so i had to ask a friend who lives here if i could use their wi-fi um but they're sleeping obviously and she was like Okay, cool. Um, I'm just gonna like leave the door open or the key by the door. And so I get here. It's so dark, and it's like such a quiet neighborhood. And I feel like I was like breaking and entering into this building. Yep. And I was just As thinking about if I got caught by the security or like the policeman or something like that, this would be like the dumbest burglary in the history of crime. You know, because I'm here it to do be, a fucking yeah. podcast. <laughs> like I'd rather. Yeah, no, you don't. You don't understand, officer. You know, it's just a podcast. And yeah, yeah. He's like, they all say that, and he just tases you. You know, <laughs> nice yeah. try. It'd be way easier to just be like, yeah, I was here to steal her MacBook. You know, but uh, we're <laughs> we're here, and uh, obviously, um, Hawaii, baby. at the top, we always do the Patreon shout out. So um, we're gonna give a shout out to our news members, Patreon. If you don't know what that is, it is the best way to support this podcast. We are completely independent, so you go to patreoncom yep. Asian, not Asian pod, and you can subscribe to our podcast. Give us five bucks, ten bucks a month, and in return, we slide into your DMs you get bonus episodes and one of the other um, rewards you get is we give a shout out on our podcast so our four newest uh, supporters this week um, and well, yeah, what we're going to do is we're going to guess your ethnicity purely based on your last name we love this game it's very very problematic so good. yes super but, problematic but we're getting very good at it here we go uh, first we got Kimberly uh, Obilana 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 that's a tricky one. That's that's sounding I'm, Hawaiian to me for some reason. That's sounding that is sounding very um yeah like Pacific Islander to me. Mm-hmm. That I'm just gonna throw it out. Ooh, there. Pacific Islander. Asian. Say. Micro, yeah, Micronesian. See, maybe Asian. maybe this is someone you broke into her apartment just now. Yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah, I think it's I think it's my friend. Uh, <laughs> then we have Evelyn. Is it Lay or Lee? Lee, I think it's L. I think it's Lee. L E. Lay. Yeah. L E. So that is uh, Vietnamese, That's if it Vietnamese. is. But I'm not sure. Yeah. Gotcha. Maybe. Probably. Gotcha. Got you. Gotcha. Got you. Ooh. Nailed it. Then we have a uh, John Conway. Just like a, okay, this just like is, a regular. This is. He, he sounds oh, like a. Is, he, he sounds like a quarterback's name or something. Just like a regular. This is clearly a Chinese dude who's just like, oh, I need a white name. Well, uh, John Conway. This is fake. <laughs> this is a fake name. This is a yeah. This is like a NFL quarterback from the 70s yeah, with yeah. Like sideburns and stuff like that. Yeah. John Conway leading for rushing yards from the Bucks, uh, Buffalo. <laughs> Damn. Well, thank you. You're, you're, you're a football Asian guy, and we love that. Thank you so much for we your love generosity. That. And finally, you, we Conway. have, um, this week's been pretty easy. We got Susanna this is a good one. Lee, L-I. L-I. That's Chinese, I think. Taiwanese. Oh, Taiwanese. It's, oh it's Taiwanese? Taiwanese? Okay. I don't know. I'm just throwing it out there. They like yeah, they like not? it. When, Taiwanese people like it when we get specific like that. So we're going to go ahead and say it's, she's Taiwanese. Oh, it's uh, it's it's the best thing in the world when you when you can call someone who is Taiwanese, Taiwanese. They, they, they get just, so happy. They give you the eye. They get so horny for that. <laughs> it's, it's the best <laughs> shit ever. Okay, moving on to the story of the week before we bring our guest on. Um, yeah, dude. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm excited about this because, okay, so you, just to set all the listeners up, you're in H- Hawaii right now, living mm-hmm. your best life. The best but life. you were living some of your worst life on the way over there because you <laughs> yes. went to Vegas first. <laughs> I went to Vegas first. And, um, okay, so last week, I didn't tell you the story because it has just happened and it was, like, really scary and I didn't want to talk too about raw. it. It was too raw. Yeah. I, I didn't want to talk about it on the podcast. But, um, so I... I went to Vegas with my high school friends because a lot of the listeners know I'm trying to rekindle some of my old relationships um, that have yes. sort of been put on hold because of comedy. I've, I've said no to a lot of weddings and just really put my friendship on hold. And I didn't like that. I'm old now. I'm trying to be friends with them again. So 
I said, why don't we yep. go do a boy's trip to Vegas? Because that's what people do in movies, right? So we go. Boy's trip. Boy's trip. Yeah, and in movies, they always work out perfectly, as we all know. Yes, so, yes, yeah. mm -hmm. yes. Yep. So, no hijinks happen. Yep. yep. So I go, and again, my friends are they're nice boys from the state of Ohio. That's where I grew up. They're, they're all married. Yep. They're, like, they're sweet, sweet boys, okay? So we go. And we're drinking and we're going clubbing and all this stuff. And, you know, it's, it's fine. And we're having a good time. And uh, one of the nights after we go see Steve Aoki, by the way, uh, he was okay. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not, I'm not too old for his music, but we go see Steve Aoki. And my friends are getting hammered. And it's because I think, I don't know. It seems, I mean, Mike, you're married. You know, maybe you can attest to this. But it seems that maybe they are not happy and they're just drinking so much. It's crazy. <laughs> they're drinking so much. That's what you do. Yeah, you get so unhappy when you're married and you just start drinking heavily. Yeah, go ahead. They were drinking so much. And um, when I was on my way home, we were like the club. You know, we left the club and we're like, let's go home because it's one thirty, and it's which means it's four thirty New York time. So let's go home. Yeah, or Eastern that's late. Standard Time. And they were like, no, we're gonna go to the strip club. And you know me, I'm. I love strip clubs. I'm also a very organized person. And I said, listen, boys, I've got a strip club planned for us tomorrow. I made a reservation at this full... I, I, can't. I made a reservation no. at this full nude spot. I cannot believe... What, did you go to Resi? Did you go to Resi <laughs> yeah, and open, make the reservation? Open table. Called, did you open table it's a, that? It's actually what a different... It's a different app called Open Asshole. And uh, you can... <laughs> And, I can't uh, believe you got a reservation. Got a reservation. What a f oh my god! And, you, you, know, get a you get apps with that? Okay. Okay. Yes. You know what's hilarious? On the I made a reservation and they give you. It's like you pay for like a table and they give you twenty beers. And I sent a separate email saying, "Hi, could we get twenty white claws instead of twenty beers?" <laughs> Anyways. This guy, the the, the 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 strip club was like, "We're gonna make so much money off of these noobs." Yes. Okay. I cannot believe it. Yes, this is so, amazing. Continue. So, but just for some context, you're supposed to make a reservation because they pick you up and stuff. And also, there's a lot of shady places in Vegas, right? Like, I think anytime you're trying okay, to, okay, yep. You, anytime, you're yep. Try, anytime you're trying to like tap into the vice industry, I think you need to be careful. Yes. Uh, no matter yes, where you are in the world, that's very true. Right? Very true. So I did my research. I made a reservation. And I said, "Hold on, boys. Why don't we go tomorrow? I have this whole thing planned out. We got a limo. It's gonna be amazing." And they were like, "No, we're horny now. We have to go." And so I was gonna go with them, but again, comedy saved me, Mike. You and I had a podcast recording very early the next morning. So I was like, you know what? I have to go home and read some of these articles about Asian Americans because I got this podcast tomorrow. Listen, I've, <laughs> I've got to go home. I've got to break into someone's apartment so I can record this podcast. It's exactly. a whole thing. So I didn't go with them because I was like, I have to wake up and like do the podcast, right? So I go to bed and then they come home at like 6 a.m. And oh, shit. I'm like, what's happening? Like, I, my, my first thought was, I was like, oh no, like did they do something bad that, their wives right. wouldn't like because they're home at 6 a.m. Yeah. But sure. what I found out is that they got there and they were scammed, dude. They got there. Damn. They were forced into like a VIP room. They were separated immediately. Forced Whoa, into a VIP okay. room. Okay, that's, yep, yep. And then yep. they had them, I guess they were like, it didn't help that they were drunk, but I guess they like took their phones and their wallets. And sure, sure. Look, if you get forced into a VIP room, forced, you know, like it means like five hot <laughs> girls like were like, hey, come on in or whatever, right? I understand. Right, right. Is it a scam? I don't know. It's a gray line. But like, what what was really fucked up is they took their wallets and they just started um, charging random amounts on their wiping card. their cards. Right? Yeah. Yep, so yep. so they woke up with like a three. I don't know if I should say this. I'm gonna say this. Three thousand dollars. Yeah. <laughs> on their yeah. credit, it's insane, right? So it yeah. like they were again. These are nice boys from Ohio. Okay, they don't know nice boys. what is going on. Okay, they're thinking about mm, tractors mm. and shit. They're like, they don't know what the fuck. They're thinking going about on. tractors. Yeah. They're ordering white claws. Yeah, yep, yeah. Yep. So they're freaking out. They're like, oh my god, this is the big city. We're being scammed in the big. It's Vegas is not Whoa. the big city, by the way. But no, it's not. But they're, yeah, they're freaking out, and um, it really put a damper. This is day two out of three. Or maybe four. And then this is a... Uh, right. It really put a damper on the trip. And I was telling you this. Uh, one of the guys, he was so scared and shook that he flew home early. He was like... Damn. He was like... I just, That's he was crazy. Like, he was like, I just got to get a hold of my wife, man. I got to get a hold of my wife. <laughs> He he's, just, he's just, babe, he's just outside. Baby, take me back, okay? Yeah. All right, I'm sorry about that. Listen, think about it. We, we at least got the travel points from it. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Oh, I, Come think, on. I think maybe because they share a credit card. Maybe he, like, knew that she would see or something. So yeah. that's, that's how this happened. Um, but yeah, dude, I don't know. Have you had anything like that happen to you? Um, I have not. I mean, I have had, uh, I have been kicked out of a strip club. Um, uh, which, which, uh, was a completely, completely justified. Uh, and I, we weren't doing anything bad. We were just like being just three assholes in the, we were just like hanging out in the bathroom, just like giggling and like the, the fucking bouncer burst in and was like, you guys get out of here. 
And I was like, you're right. We're totally, you're, you're right. You're absolutely right. Yeah. I feel like I, I almost was like, you know what? At what point is someone going to kick us out? Because I feel we're getting, we are disrespectful in here. Oh, wow. We, we like, we spent like no money at all. Oh my gosh. We we're just, we're like the opposite. We we're like completely just draining them. You know, we we're yeah, just like yeah, there, yeah, yeah. just like ruining the vibe. Um, so that's probably the most of it. It's interesting to me because, you know, you were kind of like telling me this story um, before we start recording and you were saying like, you know, hey, New York kind of teaches you a little bit about, you know, what what's a scam, what's not a scam. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if I, I don't know how I would handle it. I don't really think that being in New York for this long, I, I'm, not, I'm not like super street smart, you know, when, when, uh, when, when you're, when you're growing up as a kid and you feel like a street smart guy is like yeah. a guy with a fedora and he's like got a chain, like watch and he's like flipping a coin and he's like hey hey kid come here come here yeah i've yeah. lived here for 11 years and i have a fedora but that's it that's like <laughs> a, a extent of my like of my street smarts right, right. i don't really feel like i would be i kind of know when someone's scamming me and mainly it's just like leave me alone i don't want any of this shit yeah but yeah. i feel like if i was in vegas hey if i was getting drunk and the weird stuff was happening who knows what, was, what would happen to me yeah you know yeah. i don't know what about you do you feel like i remember you said you've been you've kind of gone through this before yeah, when you were like a younger dude, yeah, right? The so same, you feel like you've been like, hey same, man, what's happening exactly, here? Exactly, exact same yeah. thing happened to me when I was like 19 or 20 in Japan when I was like trying to go to like a hostess club and I was like trying to like, I was like trying to tap into Japanese culture because I like I didn't feel very Japanese. I was like, I'm gonna go do this thing that like <laughs> all these old salary men who hate their wives go do. So I went to go and I got scammed like 800 bucks. But uh, yeah, the same thing happened to me. So I think I would have been a little bit better at it. Um, but again, you know, I think they were drunk and um. You know, I, I want to actually talk to our guest about this because, um, hey, you know, he's from L.A. That's real close to Vegas. He's in L.A. And yeah, so yeah. you know what? Yeah. He, yep. He's a little older than me, but he's looking good. All right. Which means if he goes to Vegas, hey, he's having a good time. All right. And so he's having a good time. He's having a good time. So, you know, I feel that this guy, he, he's also had such a long career. He may have been um, a strip club DJ at some I, point. Actually, I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised. At all. I wouldn't be surprised because this guy has done everything. He's he's literally gone he's from everything. like Starbucks to movies. Like I wouldn't be surprised if at that the night you got in trouble in Vegas, Mike, he was the bathroom yeah. hand washy guy. That yeah, could have been yeah, him. Yeah. He's, that could have been he's him. Like, he's like he, yeah. He's like Aqua de Joe, you know? Yeah, he yeah, just yeah, like yeah, throws yeah, you yeah. the the towel <laughs> and like exactly yeah, man. Okay. so our yeah. our theme this week is is getting scammed in vegas asian or not asian <laughs> and our guest today oh my god mike i cannot believe he is here i can't believe it he, he was he he didn't sign in until um uh, two minutes later since uh, after a promised time and i swear to god i thought he wasn't coming and i, I was like it makes sense it makes <laughs> sense always, why would he come I, why did yeah, i ever right. think why he would, would come? he come why would i come i'm exactly. nobody yes. uh this guy is an amazing comedian actor writer producer he was asian jim from the office that's his primary <laughs> credit that's our primary credit <laughs> <That's it. laughs> asian yeah. Jimmy Woo on Marvel's WandaVision. He's he's written and directed and starred in Always Me My Maybe. Guys, give it up for the hilarious Randall Park. Hey. Yay. Hey. Oh What's my god. What's up, guys? What's going on? I can't believe you're here. This is crazy. I can't believe I'm here either. This is great. <laughs> uh, I mean, in, I mean, in that I'm a big fan of your uh, your podcast and this is really uh this is really a joy. So thank you for having That's me amazing I, I you were telling us before that you you do listen to the show and I, I mean i can't believe it because the only people i swear i i have a i have a conspiracy theory in my mind that art 19 which is like our sort of hosting slash analytics site is just telling us that people are listening to the show and actually no one is <laughs> and it's just like as long as we keep paying money and it just keeps going up so and it's just like it's just like my two friends in austin and I guess Randall Park listens yeah, to me, so that, I mean, to us, which is amazing. <laughs> no, I mean you guys are you guys are really well, well you guys are really funny, and you're a great team, you. and, uh, yeah. and and you guys have you know such and you keep it light. You know, you go there, you go places, but you, you always keep it funny and fun. And I think you know the quality of the show uh justifies oh, wow. the the you know the the uh, uh the numbers so why does it look like randall's uh why does it look like randall's, uh, it look like randall's yeah. reading off a script right now <laughs> yeah it really is <laughs> this is all fake this yeah. is all fake his pr team um, told him to say this yeah <laughs> uh yeah so i mean the first you know i want to get in there and and you listen to our story here you know you're 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 a true la asian culver mm -hmm. city that's like real la shit right there that's not just yeah. some hollywood bullshit that culver city so born I mean, have raised. you? Yeah, yeah, born and raised. I mean, I, I guess like when's the last time you went to Vegas? <laughs> Even have you been? You know, <laughs> oh, did you just go a lot? Uh, last time I went was, gosh, it must have been about eight years ago. 
eight, oh, almost wow. a decade, almost wow. a decade ago. Yeah, mm. it, was, mm. it was for a friend's, um, a friend's bachelor. Okay, yes. there we go. <laughs> That's the vibe yeah. we're looking for. Okay. Yeah. That's what we're looking yeah. for. Yeah, but it wasn't one of those like strip club, you know, it was it was yeah. a pretty tame, you know, like, OK, uh, uh, but I did try an edible uh, for, <laughs> oh. the first, for, <laughs> for the first time. First, uh, your first time trying an edible ever, really? I think it was. Yeah, it was about 10 years ago. And it was my first wow. time. Yeah. And I and I re- remember just walking around the casino, just like real happy. <laughs> and, uh, that's all I. Re- that's all I remember. That's all I remember. We, I, I don't think we went to strip club. I mean, if I if we did, I'd remember that. I, I've only gone to maybe a strip club like three times in my entire life, and uh, yeah. I don't know. I'm just not that into them, you know. Mm. Yeah, I, I feel you. Are you? I'm the, um, I'm the dude. I, I uh, my, my move is I will actually sit close to the stage because then I'm only do- doling out money, and then nobody's bothering me. That's it's almost like a little secret. Because then nobody's gonna come to you and right, like, right. try to ask you for a lap because you're, you're like, yeah, you're you're busy, but you're you only giving like yeah, one dollar yeah. at a time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't even do that. I would like just kind of find the the darkest corner, you know, and just like, <laughs> wedge wedge myself into that corner the whole night and hope nobody like approaches me and I, I don't have to approach anybody and uh i'll yeah. just sit with a drink you know have you yeah it's it, like uh, me at parties the, you know me at <laughs> any social event that's just kind of what i do yeah yeah how did he bring a bunch of doritos in here um did you <laughs> did you uh ha, do you have friends though so i'm supposed to go to i'm supposed to go to a bachelor party it's kind of up in the air mm. and like they're they're like listing out all the different activities you can do and then one of them is uh, a strip club thing and we've talked about it on the show before about how there's always the guy who's like really excited to go and then he disappears for a while was anyone yeah. in your party was was anyone in your party like that where he's like man i can't wait and then like he just has gone for like two days and then he shows uh, up again no 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 it was it was pretty again it was pretty tame i mean it wasn't like it it, it wasn't crazy i mean I, i've only really gone to mostly tame it, it's kind of sad it's a sad <laughs> comment on me <laughs> but i've only gone to like really tame uh uh very christian seeming yo uh, bachelor christian parties. bachelor yeah. parties <laughs> somebody pulls out a guitar you, and you know not, you guys want to religious yeah or anything like that but they're they're they've been oddly christian you know and even really? my bachelor party was like went yeah, to a dinner with a bunch of my friend old friends uh one of my friends lost his wedding ring in the the, the sand because the dinner was on this beach and uh okay. we spent the whole uh we spent the whole bachelor party trying to find this guy's <laughs> oh ring <my> God. <laughs> Whoa. because we were like That's... oh no you know your wife's gonna think we went to some yeah. like strip club and like right. you you know met some you know and something crazy happened when really it was like he was just talking to animated and and his <laughs> ring fell off his hand and and we couldn't find it and and then and then we went to a bar and then we went home I love wow. that wow I you're, love that yeah I love your you know why I'm so glad you're here you're you really are kind of um emblematic of us you know just a good boy straight asian guy vibe that's why we know? like you randall you know you you <laughs> it's, it's interesting you are who you play on tv you know like yeah like, i feel like if i asked asian jimmy Wu, like i said asian you know would you, have you been to a street club he's like no i think i'd rather read read leviticus that's what we're gonna do today you yeah know? that's exactly. that's you know? asian jimmy Wu's vibe have you heard the good news yeah, yeah that's what you would do i also feel too that like because you've been like plugged in you know you've been grinding and and killing it for so long that I'm yeah. just imagining at all these different bachelor parties, there's just Lee Isaac Chung there and just like, you know, just like <laughs> random, really famous Asian people, you know, who are just like hanging out also, you know, I don't know. Not, no not really, not really. It's just a bunch <laughs> of like, bunch of neighborhood folks, you know. Um, Dang, dude. So, but, but, you know, like when you say that, you know, I, I mean, what, I think that's part of the reason why I'm a fan of your podcast, because when I like listen to you guys, like I kind of see myself in you guys a lot, especially the, <laughs> you know, like wow. the journey, you know what I mean? The journey. Right, and I'm like, journey. oh, gosh, I remember, I remember, you know, I remember I was going through the exact same thing, you know. You've had you've had a tough life then, I will say. That. <laughs> yeah, a, yeah, it was a horrible life. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get into some of these things here first of all uh fumi was making fun of me can i call you hyung okay because you are kind of like my older brother that's all 
That's like what's what's what a younger brother calls an older brother. I never had an older brother. That's right. I'd like yeah, to think yeah. That he would look and be like like you. Brandon. That's like my yeah, first yeah. Question, yeah. You know? I mean, that would be kind of weird, but go for, it. <laughs> go for it. I told you he would think it's weird, but yes. <laughs> well, I'm gonna do it anyway. So, so um, okay. we were talking. So, yeah. we, we were talking about Vegas, and we were doing a lot of research on you. And Redo, I'll be honest. All right, you you we love you, but you go on these podcasts and. People, people just kind of ask you these basic ass questions about your career, and I was like, I don't want to do that with Randall. Okay, Boring. I, I want to get yeah, to know. Yeah. I, I want to get to know the real Randall. And one thing that really yes. caught our attention was that yes. you, on one of the podcasts, I believe you said you've never been Korean clubbing. Is that true? Uh, that's not Korean true. Clubbing? That's not true. I've been okay. once. Okay. I've been oh, Korean wow. clubbing okay. once. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Once okay. it was. Uh, this was. Uh, I think. I think it was early two thousands. L A. Yes. Yes, uh, you got the, your diesel. The, lay lay the scene out for us, okay? What, so you, you, okay, what, so you, Von Dutch hat, you know, <laughs> diesel jeans. Uh, no, Adidas no, no, no. This track, was a different jump. time. This this okay. was well, at least in the K club scene in L.A., there was one club called La Prive that was oh, really okay. popping. It was Whoa. like the club, and everybody went. And I always felt like I wasn't that like. I don't know. I always felt like I, I wasn't Korean enough for the Koreans, you know. And I, but I really wanted. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I wanted to be down, you know. So yeah. So I had a, I had a Korean friend who actually was like Korean, you know. And and he right. he was just like, let me take you to the club. And I was like, hell yeah, you know. I I could like experience my people, you know. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I, and I remember I like I, I was like. For some reason, I thought it would be cool to dress in all white. Uh, I, <laughs> I don't know. Why. I haven't dressed in all white since or before that. I, and I don't even know how I got all white, but I had all white. So I was like, I'm going to wear all white. Well, are, we, are, we, are, we, are you wearing an all white suit? Are you wearing je- white, no, white no, jeans? No, no, no. Like a white button up and, and, uh, and white like pants you know okay so and, you're looking uh, like a uh, um uh, a cheesecake factory waiter i got it okay you're, 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 I, I, i'm thinking more like diddy's parties you know like <laughs> like all, you know what i mean i'm not thinking like cheesecake factory but i, I remember <laughs> and, and remember this is like early 2000s yeah uh, so i'm sure it's different now but uh i remember going there and i i walk in and everyone is dressed in all black. Oh, I swear shit. to God. And I'm like, yeah. what the hell? Uh, <laughs> so the, the way the, the the waiter dude like takes us to our table and immediately, you know, like my friends start like booking girls, you know, right. and, okay. and uh, yep. uh, and uh, they just see me kind of, you know, and I, I don't know, I didn't know how to feel about that. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah. Not like I don't, I, I, it felt like kind of weird to me, but I also was like, oh, well, this is, you know, just how it works. And, you know, I, I should yeah. be comfortable with this, but I feel a little weird about it. And one of my friends just saw me kind of sit in by myself and he was like, I'm going to book you a girl. <laughs> And I was wow. like, oh, oh, okay, okay. And he uh, okay. he gets the waiter to, to bring this girl. And uh, there's a bottle of Crown Royal on the table. Of course hey. there is. And, yes, yes. and, and the, yep. the bottle cost like $4,000. Oh, my God. It was so much so money. expensive. <clears throat> and like fruit that cost like, you know, $3,000. It's right. like a fruit. plate of yep. fruit. Yep. Yep. And she... And the thing was, you're supposed to put, you know, I poured her uh, a shot of this like $4,000 crown royal and, <laughs> and, and myself a shot. And she downs it. She looks at me and then she just walks off. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, yeah, She's just like, who's yeah. this guy wearing all white no. at the all <laughs> yeah. black club? And so, yeah. and so for our, our fans who don't know, just so you, you know that. Uh, Randall's not relating some sort of like human trafficking story. Yes. This no, is no, 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 bo- no, Korean no, no. booking. This is Korean booking. Yeah. Booking is Korean clubbing. So what's, what's supposed to happen is the, the guys get a table and it costs like $8,000 to sit down with a crap bottle of Crown and some pears. And yeah, uh, yeah. the the waiter acts as kind of like an intermediary, I guess you could say, and like gets girls to sit down. These are just like regular people who are just like regular girls. These are not like yeah. people who work at the club or some shit. And they sit down and you don't have to you don't have to talk to the guy you don't have to drink with the guy but it is a free a way to get free drinks and uh meet um dudes wearing all white 
and you can get up and you can leave <laughs> if you want to. Yeah, um, and I mean, wow, and it goes the other cool. way too. Girls can book guys, right? Okay, uh, mm. yeah, it goes the yep. other way. Yep. But but yep. I remember also thinking like, okay, this this booking thing is just not me. I'm gonna like go out and like kind of maybe ask people if they want to dance, yeah. you know? Okay, and okay. I, and I don't know if this is still the case, like, uh, the, uh, but I remember asking like two, two or three girls if they wanted to dance, and they <laughs> literally they they put their hands up like this <laughs> in front of your face, <laughs> and then they walk off and. <gasps> I guess it was the thing at the time where they just put their hands up in your right. face and walk off. Right. I, I don't wow. know if that's the, the thing. Yeah. But that happened right. to me three times, and I was like, this oh sucks. Oh, my God. Yeah, and then I went and found a dark corner. And, uh, <laughs> with, with, your, with your Dorito bag. At, the, at yeah, your bag of Doritos. Dor- bag of Doritos. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I just, what like, was your... you know, the night sucked. What is what, what did you have? Did you have a move? Did you just like you know like did you say what did you have a line you would say or did you, you like, no try to dance no up on that's that? a thing yeah. I don't no I yeah. don't have lines I don't yeah. I mean I generally I'm not I'm not like the type to approach strangers and mm-hmm. yes. and you know but I think because of the night and it was my first time at a Korean club and and I thought you know like. Uh, you know, it, this is a special thing. I'm kind of drunk. I'm gonna just yeah appro- approach women. You, yeah, you know, you got your nice clothes just... from Express on. Yeah, I get it. You yeah, know? yeah, exactly. From Express. Express. That's right. Oh shit. That's right. <laughs> did, um, That's right. Did, okay, man. so are uh, you still friends with this uh, this Korean guy? That your yeah, your friend, a, a good friend, really? childhood friend. Childhood, wow. Uh, yeah, I grew up with him. That's awesome. Um, is it Lee Isaac Chung? No. It, no. Okay. <laughs> no. Right. Uh, no. That's, I mean, that's amazing. Fumi, do you have, you never been. You're going to no, move no, no. to I, LA I, soon. I went twice in New York after we had our conversation. Okay. Because, oh, because right, I just right, wanted right. to experience, well, because in experience New York, it. Randall, I, I don't know if you've heard, but like in New York, sometimes it's hard to get in if you're not Korean. So they like check yes. your right. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I wanted to um, maybe experience some of that racism. So I, I went in there, but they let me in and, and it was cool. <laughs> yeah. But it, it, I, I mean, I think I don't, um, did I dance with any girls? No, I danced with my boys. <laughs> I just stay with my- <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yes. yeah, um, yeah. But but you're right. Yeah. It's, it's hard to in, in that in that environment with the music so loud. Because I do think that first of all, 2001 Randall Park in the all express white outfit. Here's the sad thing about that story <laughs> is I bet you have amazing dance moves that will kill I feel you would at do parties. It. But they're just not gonna you know? they're not uh, gonna kill at in that oh, wow. situation because that club yeah. is all about being like sexy and cool and i feel dancing yeah. inherently yeah. is in, initially it's not sexy you know you're just like having a good yeah. time and so i i appreciate that i do have amazing dance moves <laughs> do you really i mean i wouldn't be because you're like a you're like a you're like a you know obviously an actor you're a performer you're you know you're in a band did you have like Moves, well, I was in like a when I was when I was in uh, elementary school, I was in this break dance group. <laughs> oh right? shit! And, uh, <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> but this is like eighties. This is like you know late eighties, yes. yeah. and uh, uh, and so yeah, I mean, I'm 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 by no means like a break dancer is, anymore. No, that's or, amazing. Uh, Maybe you yeah, should you should have told but, the girls that. But, you should have told the girls that. Yeah, I was like, you should have got some moves, and these yeah. girls missed out on. I know they, they did. They did for sure. I mean, can I just yeah. say too that so far as us traveling back in time through the 2000s and now to the 80s, this is just an amazing episode of Fresh Off the Boat. <laughs> you can just, so, really someone could write this backstory. Um, we really we also heard, uh, and we were like snooping around on the internet, you, you used to do stand-up. That's like not really your, your thing. I anymore, did. Which, yeah. I mean, we want to talk I about did. that. And, like, and, you know? and, and, yeah. yeah, and hearing about you guys on your podcast, I mean, that's, that's what really takes me back, you know, because I did mm. it for, I don't know, probably a good six years, you know. Okay. What, yeah. Um, and yeah, yeah when, did you, when did you start? Because like you were, I guess you were, you were acting Gosh. first and then you started doing stand-up just because like Ali Wong was doing stand-up. You were like, oh, maybe I can give this a shot. Yeah. Well, I was acting, but I wasn't acting professionally at the time. Okay. I was like right. doing, I was doing theater in LA and I was, uh, doing improv and it just kind of felt like a natural kind of thing to get into if you're super into comedy, you know, at the time. And I was like, and I was super into comedy. Like I, you know, I watched every late night set of anybody who, you know, and and I had all the albums of every comedian, you know? And, uh, uh, so I was, and I, and I, and I had come from a writing background. So I was like, Oh, well, the cool thing about stand is you just write, and you perform, you know, you don't have to yeah. wait for anybody mm-hmm. to yeah. tell you, you know, uh, you don't have to book a venue. You don't have to like 
you know, market the show. You just, well, I mean, I guess you do it to some degree, but, uh, but, uh, yeah, so I got into it and, uh, around the same time Allie was getting into it, but she, she lived mm -hmm. in, uh, uh, the Bay area and I was right. doing it out of LA. So, mm. uh, so yeah, I mean, I loved for a time. I really loved it. I, you know, I thought this was going to, what, 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 this was what I wanted to do for, for my oh, life. Really? You know? When was like, well, yeah. what, what yeah. years were you doing it? Because I feel like, you know, with Ali Wong, I, I know you guys came up together. Um, you, I feel like you guys were doing stand up like it, I call it like post that fan, but before Ronnie Chang. And it's like yeah. this weird, and it was, oh, oh you yeah, know, well before Ronnie. For sure. Yeah. 2000, and, like mid 2000s, and, late 2000s. And, and like, 2000s you know, we started in 2014 and that was so different from now, which is 2021. And I, and I, I don't hear a lot of stories about that era where you're probably doing it, I don't know, maybe late 2000s or something like that. Is that, is that right? Like 2008, uh, seven, yeah, six? Yeah, yeah. So that may, no, no, more like, or more like mid, mid to early to mid, I'd say is mm -hmm. when I started maybe 2002, something like that. What was, yeah. what, what was that? Uh, uh, 2003. What was that like back yeah. then for like an, like an Asian American, you know, comedian? Because I know it was really weird for me in 2014 and I can't even imagine you know, what that might have been like for you. Or maybe it was awesome because you're on the West Coast and it's, you know, there are a lot of Asian people out right. there. Yeah, I mean, it was, I mean, for me, it was, it was just, you know, the grind, you know, it was, it was the same thing. It was the same thing in that, you know, you, you, you know, I had heard that like, if you're, if you want to be a standup, you just got to perform all the time, you know, and in LA, it's like harder to come by than in New York, like performance opportunities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oddly, even though it's L.A. of all places, like mm -hmm. it's just like harder, you know, mm -hmm. so so I'd be doing open mics everywhere and, and uh, you know, and then and, and at the time and I don't know if this is still the case, but like all of the clubs would have their like Asian night, you know, uh -huh, yeah, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, like chop stick <laughs> yes, exactly. Sunday or whatever. <laughs> yeah, so, yes. I am so, sad. Oh, I'm so sad to report that those names and shows still exist today in 2021. Uh, they're all yeah, still yeah, live yeah. and well. Those are exactly what's happening right now. <laughs> Right now, yeah. yeah, I mean, even at the time, I felt like, oh, man, this is BS because it's like, why can't we just they just let us perform in any show. Yeah. But at yes. the same time, I was like, oh, but this is also great because I can't get time in any other show. Mm -hmm. So Shit. so if I just do these shows, I could get time, you know. Yeah. And uh, and and those were those those shows, you know, I think the improv and, and the Laugh Factory, they both had uh, those types of shows. And uh, um and you know, I ran my own room for a while. Uh, uh, yeah, and uh, had friends who ran the room, so I was always, you know, just basically always performing. You know, back then it was like way more. I don't know how it is now in terms of like racism, like in in jokes, you know, in people's sets. But back then it was way more kind of loose with that, yeah. you know, yeah, and yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and uh, uh you know, it, it was it was pretty common, I think, especially in that in that, you know, kind of open mic level, you know, you'd right, hear it a lot right. more. And yeah. uh, um, and I don't know, it's just a different time. So in my in my head at the time, it was like, look, I mean, the, uh, I, you know, deep down, I think these jokes suck and they're <laughs> hack. But every now and then you'd come across a really great one and I'd be like, yeah. oh, that, that's, a, that's a smart joke, you know, yeah. Yeah. Um, e even though I'm like deeply hurt. Um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's how you know, that's how you know you're a comedian because like every once in a while you're like, whoa, that was really a really unusual take, you know? Yeah, and that's yeah, the thing, yeah, right? Yeah, I'll give you yeah. respect if you, but I've heard them all, you know? Yeah. So oh, you better have heard some real all. good shit. Heard yeah. them all. Heard them all. Exactly. Um, but uh, but yeah, I, I would say like from what I'm hearing, you know, and, and uh, even from your podcast, you know, it's not much different. You know, it's not much mm. different. It's just a grind. It's just a grind. Yeah. And you find your you find your tribe and you, you kind of come up with yeah. that with that class of people. And, you know, well, today, I think the biggest difference, at least, in, at least from what I started to now is like, I, I, I can't say this with 100 percent confidence, but like, Mike, I don't know if you'd agree, but I feel today it's like kind of cool to be an Asian comedian whereas like mm. when I started it was 100% not and you almost kind of wanted to like hide that if you wanted to get booked for some reason you know oh, and, oh uh, yeah there was definitely that there was yeah, definitely that yeah. well you know it, it, you know people of not just Asians but like uh you know people who are just like I'm not going to talk about race I'm mm -hmm. not going to talk right. about race because I don't yeah. want to you use that as a crutch you know I am going to yeah, yeah. you know uh yeah um 
Yeah, there was definitely that. And the, the alt scene was real, was really burgeoning when, uh, mm. when I was doing it. So there, mm. there was almost like these two schools, you know, the club comics yep. and the, and the alt comics yep. and the alt comics were, were often like, very uh, uh, experimental, sometimes just straight up not funny, you know, but uh, <laughs> but they yep. had a crowd you because, you know, yeah. uh, they had a crowd because they were weird enough, you know, yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. It, that it was like art, you know, like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then there were the club comics and the ones I respected the most were the ones who could do both, who could just mm-hmm. kind of right. do every, yeah. every, every best. room, you know, that those mm-hmm. were the ones that, and that was the kind of comic I wanted to be. Um, yeah. But uh, but yeah, yeah, that 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 was I, uh, fun times. I I I mean, I definitely hear you. I think uh, Fumi. I think at the very least, people are at least in New York are aware that like, um, I feel before you used to be able to say, oh, you know, like, it it was it was in the mainstream mind that there's you know Asian people are a certain way. And now there are such things as cool Asians and, and I don't know, like Instagram famous D- Asian DJs and, and that sort of thing. So now people are starting to think, oh, I can't just like lay out all my usual Asian racism, <laughs> you know, because yeah, yeah. there's yeah. there's just more of us now on TV. Yeah. There's more of us. You see us in on social media. You see all these things. There's just, I guess, more awareness. It sounds really dumb, but it's like, oh, no, it's true. Are, yeah. You yeah. know? Yeah. 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 I mean, just like humans. I mean, know? I think. Like recently, like I was in, I was in a room. And it wasn't there weren't a lot of Asian people there, but I had made some comment about how like, oh, you know, like blonde hair girl, like gr- Asian girls who like dye their hair blonde, like they do anal or something, yeah. and they, they like laughed and they like got it, and I was like, oh, I can't yeah. believe you know what I'm talking about, Cause, you know, like yeah. they yeah. they know enough Asian people to know that like, oh, you know, that's sort of the artsy <laughs> type with the tattoos are gonna do something a little more alternative, and by alternative oh, right, I right, mean right. I mean butt sex, but you know what I mean. But it's like <laughs> yeah. it was cool, it was cool that that got through to non Asian yeah, people, yeah. you know. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. For, I, I think, uh, yeah, it's definitely. I mean, it's not just stand up for for Asian Americans, but I think just the times have changed in mm-hmm. a lot of ways. Yeah. yeah. Summer's here, and the living ain't easy. If you've got a swamp ass, how <laughs> will you stay on top of your sweaty bottom? Try a refreshing spray from a Hello Tushy bidet. Keep your sweaty crack clean all summer long with the brand new Hello Tushy 3.0 Modern Bidet Attachment. It's a stylish, eco-friendly, refreshing little shower for your ass. Hello Tushy 3.0 cleans soggy butts like a champ, but it doesn't stop there. Uh-oh. It cleans itself with the Smart Spray. Yes, trademarked. Automatic self-cleaning nozzle. No one wants to work up a sweat in the 100 degree heat. That's why the Hello Tushy bidet attaches to your existing toilet with no electricity or extra plumbing needed. And Hello Tushy cuts toilet paper use by 80%, so it'll pay for itself in a few months. Plus, Hello Tushy's got your ass covered with a 60 day risk free guarantee and a 12 month warranty. Already got a Hello Tushy on your pot? Treat your ass to the new 3.0 model. If you're new to the revolution, join millions of happy Hello Tushy customers right now and have a clean butt with every flush. Defeat Swamp Ass. Go to hellotushy.com slash a a to get 10% off plus free shipping. This is a special offer for our listeners at hellotushi.com slash ANA for 10% off. Hellotushi.com slash ANA. And I'm glad you brought that up, Fumi, because now we're going to uh, ask uh, Randall about butt stuff. Hell yeah. So, Hell um, yeah. Sure, next bunch sure. Of qu- no. <laughs> no um, he was too ready. He called my bluff immediately. Hey, I'm an open um, book. No, we... <laughs> uh, do you remember any of your old bits? Because... You know, you you just mentioned something, you know, I, I, I about how um, I think Asian comedians and, and people are, w- we've heard it all. And I think that's actually kind of the reason why a lot of Asian comics don't do Asian jokes for a while is because it's hard to not do the things that even the 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 bad white comic is doing and so you try to kind of not go there yeah yeah. and then yeah. after a while and and only after a while like myself recently in the last like couple years have i been like i'm gonna go so specific about me that no one else can follow me into where i'm gonna go and that's right. it's not easy to do but i was wondering you know we have we everybody has uh, me and fumi we have like expired asian bits bits that like just don't they just don't make sense anymore at the time they made sense you know a couple years ago and now we just don't do them for whatever reason. And I don't know if you have any jokes like that or even if you remember all your old set, you know what I'm saying? Oh my God. I mean, uh, 
Uh, I'm sure I did. I'm sure I'm sure I had like a lot of jokes that my, the problem with my and then part of the reason why I, I, you know, eventually stopped doing it was because I was well, first off, I wasn't that good, you know, and I think <laughs> I was so no, seriously, I was and I was so influenced by so many comedians that I loved, yeah. you know, that like yeah. I never really found my own voice, you know, like. Yeah. Uh, I didn't have my, you know, I mean, like, I, like, I loved absurdity and I love like, uh, uh, just like those one line, you know, like the Mitch Hedbergs and the, mm-hmm. you know, I yeah, love like course. that style of comedy. But then at the same time, I loved like the Dave Attells who were just like super dirty. And, uh, yeah. uh, uh, I was a, a huge Margaret Cho fan, obviously, uh, uh, right. the queen, you know, uh, uh, and I just, I just didn't have my own voice. So I kind of had jo- all different types of jokes and, and mm-hmm. the, the set was very weird, you know, I'm trying to remember <laughs> a joke. I, I, I was stalking you like 10 minutes before you came on and I, and I saw this joke that you did. I don't know what year it was, but it was, it was, you were talking about how you couldn't trade lunch with your friends when you're younger because your mom would pack you Korean food. And your punchline was like, hey, man, can I uh, can you give me that bag of Doritos for this um, cup of sea otter nipples? Those <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember that one? Yeah. <laughs> Love uh, some Korean yeah, yeah. sea otter nipple. Yeah, that sounds delicious. Yeah. <laughs> Now, Vaguely, now white kids yeah. will be. Now white kids are probably going up to Asian Asian kids and going, "Hey, man, you got any of that sea otter nipple?" Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> My mom doesn't let me eat that stuff. You know. <laughs> so. I know. I know. Yeah. I, that, that that was. Uh, I do remember that one. Uh, yeah, trading food with kids, and and I think the tag was like even even the other Asian kids would be like get the hell away from me or something like that. <laughs> 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 um, Fucking Korean kids. Yeah, I, I do I, remember I feel, this yeah. joke. I I do remember this joke I had, and I just w- I was I was so perplexed because people wouldn't people it had it get, it had a bad reaction like from the audience, and I just thought it was like a, yes. a good joke. And I, the joke was um, that I used to drink a lot, uh, uh, and I would get drunk a lot. And this one night, I got so drunk that the next morning I woke up and I was laying next to my grandmother. Oh, yes. I saw this. Yes. Oh, my God. (laughs) And and I was like, oh, man, how did I get underground? (laughs) (laughs) That's funny. That's funny. This is a day. This is like a Dave Attell thing, you know, like he just keeps going further and further. And then it was like, what am I doing in Korea? uh, (laughs) (laughs) But I remember like whenever every time I do that, it would just bring like the set. It would just kill the set, you know, like (laughs) just like not feel good. Oh, and I man. wondered if it was something about me and my energy that uh, that people just didn't. I mean, on top of the joke being a little dark, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> you but do yeah, seem like yeah. a, I, I told you you have like a nice boy energy. I, I saw you do that joke. I mean, in in uh, in in my research, and you had on like you know like uh, you know some baggy jeans and, and a track jacket, and I was like, I don't believe this guy has sex with his dead grandmother. You know, <laughs> like, seems like a nice boy. Yeah, there, you know? there are comedians who can do dead grandma jokes and comedians who can't, you know? And I right, think David, David Tell David Tell has sex with his dead grandma. I yeah. don't think I was a comedian who could pull that joke off. Yet I was like influenced yeah. by comedians who could, and I think that was like yeah. a part mm. of it, you know? Mm-mm-mm. Yeah. We also want to talk about your career, which has been, I mean, I, I swear to God, I, I think um, you were doing a podcast with, um, with David Chang and, and he was talking about how he was like watching you before you even really got famous. And I feel the same way. I feel like I kept, I would, I would just like turn to my wife and be like, there's this Asian guy I see in everything and I don't know his name <laughs> and he's in, but he's in tons of shit. And I'm just going to like, you know, I just, I was just like, you know, uh, true detectiving it, you know, like I was like connecting the dots. Okay. This, it looks like he's just recently moved to maybe the South because he's doing a lot of things in the South right now. And I, I and, and you've been, you've been grinding for a long time. Um, and I just wanted to share the story about when Fumi and I, it was me, Fumi and my wife we went to go see Always Be My Maybe. We made a point of watching it in theaters, 
in oh. theaters. Went to oh, like awesome. went Thank to you. a theater in the in the in the financial district, mm-hmm. and I knew it was going to be good because as soon as um, ninety three till infinity came on, I was like, they know exactly what they're doing. <laughs> this is exactly the vibe I want. <laughs> just run, just stop it right there, and it's going to be good. And of course, it was amazing. Um, but Fumi, you had a very particular reaction to this. Yes, I started crying, Randall. I started crying. <laughs> oh, you did. <laughs> well, you know what it was. It wasn't even no. I, I wasn't crying because I didn't think it was funny, but it was like literally the first five minutes is a montage of your childhood with Allie or yeah, um, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Uh, I forgot her character's name uh, uh, Sasha, Sasha Sasha that's right Sasha and you guys are like kids and you're like there's this montage of like you guys are both like 11 and you're like going on a date in San Francisco you ask yeah. for some money from your dad you're, you're on the trolley you're getting candy or whatever it is and yeah, um, yeah. you know we, we always talk about Asian representation but I was just like you never see like little Asian kids having like an innocent play date in the city, yeah. right? you know, you never see During it. The city. And, but it's so real because, like, I did that, you know, I, I did, yeah, yeah. and you did that too. But it's never on TV in like a genuine way. And we're like yeah. three minutes into a comedy movie, and I'm like holding my tears back because I'm next to my friend and his <laughs> and his fucking wife, and I didn't want to be a weirdo. <laughs> um, <laughs> But I didn't. And even, I was yeah. just like, yeah, man. You know, ninety three to the feet. I was like, I was like, I was taking a hit from my vape pen. I was like, this is amazing. Yeah. I was, I was <laughs> leaning my head back. <laughs> Fumi's yeah. crying. <laughs> just we tears coming reactions. down my face. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. She just wanted to share oh, that, that with that's you, Randall. Really sweet. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. That's that's really sweet. I mean, yeah. I mean, I think there was a lot of that stuff that we put into that movie. Just, I mean, we took so much from just our lives that, uh, uh, you know, once it came out, there was a lot of things like that from from Asian Americans specifically. Of and they were like, yeah, like innocuous things like that. You know, just like. Yeah you know little little details that that people mm-hmm. like really held on to those little details and uh, and that was pretty cool this summer it's been easier than ever to drop our personal care routines but with your personalized grooming kit from Hawthorne it's easy to stay on track Hawthorne is a premium grooming brand that tailors your personal care routine to your unique profile First, you take their quiz. They ask me things like what kind of hair I have, how do I feel about sweat, what do you care most about in your deodorant? Um, you know, these are the big questions in life. And that's the kind of stuff that they take into their algorithm and figure out what kind of stuff you need. It was actually really fun. And at the end, I got the essential bundle with all my products tailored to my body type and lifestyle. And what is my body type and lifestyle? It's slim and horny. The products I got were um, face moisturizer. Um, it's not just for horny people, but it definitely works on horny skin. Hawthorne takes the risk out of shopping for personal care by giving you free shipping on your order and returns. With their subscription options personalized to your usage, Hawthorne makes sure you never run out of your essentials. Life is complicated. Hawthorne keeps it simple with a short study-backed quiz that matches you with your perfect grooming kit. Looking your best has never been easier. Take Hawthorne's quiz today and get started on your personalized self-care routine by going to hawthorne.co and use promo code NOTASIAN to get 10% off your first purchase. That's H-A-W-T-H-O-R-N-E dot C-O, promo code NOTASIAN. Hawthorne.co, promo code NOTASIAN. We're not successful Asians. Mm-hmm. We're almost quitting Asians, mm-hmm. okay? And we've we've heard mm-hmm. about your. I'm. I love your your you whole thing. You guys aren't really almost quitting, though, are you? That's like no, no, no. no, no. no. We just that's a dream. Any... That's at the that dream, at this yeah. point it's a fantasy. Yeah. I wish. <laughs> I hope one day I can quit. Um, <laughs> but you had this funny story about how you 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 know you were you were trying to quit acting and you were like okay i'm gonna go to architecture school yeah and then you were in a you were in a physics class and you couldn't pass the physics class because for what you know you're you weren't in you 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 weren't a student anymore you were just like out of the mindset yeah and i related to that so hard because i was like i remember there was a certain point in my i was in college still and i was like doing pretty bad in my pre-med classes i was like still like maybe i could still be a doctor i remember sitting going into a physics class and um and as soon as the as soon as the professor said there's a ball rolling down a frictionless plane i was like nope this is not for me I just, as soon as he said that but do you remember exactly like the, the there's a, was there a particular problem or something like that in physics where you're like fuck this i don't remember like the specific problem but i do remember it was like the literally the first day of that class and like <laughs> yeah I, and like yeah. i, I yeah. you know i did not understand a word uh, that professor was saying and uh, and after and I and I didn't come back after that because I was like wow I you know I'm too dumb from like pursuing <laughs> yes. stand up for the, for you know, yes. the past like yes two and a half years I was just yes. like too dumb 
and uh, 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 and and auditioning and doing these things that were just such a different part of the brain that uh, that I had lost it. I had lost, uh, you know, and I used to be really good at that stuff, you know, when I was in high school. Right. And, and uh, but I just it was gone. It was withered away. So, you know, I, I, it was kind of like in a way, fate kind of just pushing me back towards this path, yeah. you know, because did, did, did that, did that I had nothing else did, to offer the world, you know. Did that freak, yeah, did that yeah, freak yeah. you out, though? Because I feel like part of, and, you know, going back to, like, you know, earlier when you are like, when you said, oh, you guys aren't really going to quit. Part of me and Mike's, the reason why we're not successful is because, you know, hey, we got, <laughs> we, got, we got immigrant parents, okay? We don't come from money. And sometimes we don't, a lot of times we don't believe in ourselves, you know? And we have to hear it from other yeah, people. Yeah. And I think sometimes, yeah. even though, you know, I, I have, a, like, a TV writing job that's, like, kind of hard to get, and I, I worked very hard to get it, I still, in my head, I'm like, okay, well, if this doesn't work out, like, I can, like, get an MBA, or, like, I can go back to, like, data analysis, which it's is what I was doing. It's always in your doing. mind. It's yeah. in my mind, yeah. but when I heard yeah. your story, I was like, oh, my God, I don't even know if I know how to do, like, these linear regressions anymore. You know what I mean? Like, I don't <laughs> even know, I don't know if I can do, like, I don't, you know, K-means cluster analysis or whatever. Like, I might have forgotten, and that really scared me to be like, yeah. oh, I'm, I'm, I can't go back anymore. I think I'm just in Dude. this. Yeah. Do, you still, do you have that in your mind ever? Do you feel like, you know what? Maybe I won't get any more Marvel roles and I'm not going to have to go <laughs> and... Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, well, I don't, it's kind of it's kind of weird. It's kind of a com... I, I don't know. I, like, I don't have that worry like that I that yeah. uh, I'll, I'll have to quit and, and do something else. But I do have... Uh, well, two things. I know that it, it it's inevitable, you know, that things are going to stop one day. I mean, that's just, you know, mm. the nature of life you know it's just gonna stop and 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 i do and i do uh know that it you know the whole thing ebbs and just from being at this long enough yeah it all ebbs and flows right it, there's this periods right. where it's just like nothing's working out and uh and, and and i feel like in those periods like even like it's just human it's just so human to be mm -hmm. like oh my god i'm done you know i'm done yeah. and, and and even i go through that you know and i think Mm -hmm. anyone in it goes through a version of that, you know, no matter what kind of place you're at in, in the business. And, uh, and I think just the key is, is to just stay in it, you know? And, and, and once you're dumb, like, like I was, it's like, you have no choice, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, this whole thing about the being dumb thing is so true. Cause like, you know, I got I got my I got my day job still, which I, I like and I think I'm I'm good at. But I was thinking that if I didn't have this kind of like little path that I'm on, I don't know what that what else I would offer. I don't think I could do anything. I, I, I think my backup plan would just be like go back to high school. I have no idea what it would be. <laughs> I have nothing you know what I'm saying? I just can't put that into my brain anymore. I'm like, you know, I everything yeah. to me is a joke. Everything to me is this. Like this is all I have now. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It's, yeah. It's true. It's everything else is atrophied, you know? I think that's a good thing, though. You know, I think that's a good thing. Cause uh, you know, I'd say the same thing goes for doctors. You know, like mm. same thing goes for lawyers. Like at a certain point, they're like, "Gosh, this is BS. I want to do something else," but they really they can't, ha they can't do anything else. You know, mm, so like yeah. you're you're on yeah. a path. You know, you're on a path. That yeah. means you're on a path, and yeah. and uh, and uh, and that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Yeah, yeah, we definitely don't want any doctors coming up with stand-up bits. So yeah, that'd no. be the end of no. You guys stay in your lane. We'll stay in our lane. <laughs> um, um, Randall, I yeah. wanted to ask you this. You know, you. A lot of times in your interviews, you talk about sort of the long grind that you've had to sort of, you know, uh, withstand to get to where you are. And um, I, I remember on one of the podcasts I was listening to, you know, you were comparing your co career to like, or not comparing, but you had just mentioned um, Stephen Yun and how he kind of just kind of oh, yeah. skyrocketed and he got a lot of stuff earlier on. And, and he admits that himself. I've I read articles oh, about yeah, that. Yeah. And, that's like, yeah. and that's super awesome. And I wonder, you know, and I think for us too, uh, even in stand up, uh, I had a handful of friends who just got shit right away, like two, three years in, and the rest of us just yeah. have to grind. And yeah. that's at the time you're jealous, but now that I'm like eight years in, I look back and, uh, oops, sorry, that's my alarm going off. Um, I look back and, um, you know, sometimes, I mean, the grind is tough, but because you grinded, Randall, like you're in everything and then you're, in you're in everything that there's, there's like a TikTok trend based on you. Are you you're familiar yeah, with this, yeah. right? Yeah. 
right? Yeah, People, yeah, yeah. you're just you're in you're in an Eminem music video. You're in iCarly. You're in like, um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Our producer wrote down all these things that you're in, and um, I wonder. I just wanted to ask you, like, you know, when you look back on your career, you know, would you have if you could do it again? Would you just because you've I'm sure because you've done all these crazy little parts, you have these crazy stories. And, yeah. you know, if you could do it again, would you just do it the same way? Or do you still um, think like, man, it would have been awesome if I could just get something two years into everything? Well, I, I you know, I, I really think like that the way it happened for me is the way that it was supposed to happen for me, you know, because mm, right. I don't think like if it, like if I like Steven, for example, I mean, he's he's super talented. He's super good looking. He's, uh, you know, it makes sense that right off the bat, you know, that he'll he'll get something, and he has a, a, a just a maturity about him, and a, and a, uh, yeah. a very kind of I don't know, like there's a lot of wisdom in that guy, you know. Mm -hmm. So that, so mm -hmm. he could handle that, you know. Whereas I think I I don't think I could have handled it, you know. I was too dumb, mm. you know. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> you were wearing and, you were wearing too much white at the club okay? I, I don't think white. Steven Young is doing that yeah, yeah he's not doing that you know and and I think I was uh I, I <laughs> and I think I, I and I and I think yeah and the benefit of that of that path for me is that yeah it, it's like I got to experience a lot of things I got to get better like slowly mm. over time yeah I got to get become more confident and that was something I, I i severely lacked at the beginning I, you know it's just kind of in my nature to kind of to uh to want to be better but not feel like i'm there yet you know and i yeah, but i think yeah. slowly over time like i just started becoming like more confident and more uh uh feeling like i don't know not 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 feeling like I don't necessarily, I still feel like an outsider in a lot of ways in this mm. business, but, but I also feel like I understand the business now, you know, I get yeah. it now. And, yeah. I, and that wouldn't have happened had I not had this kind of slow build over time. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I, I, one thing I've always, you know, you, you definitely have the slow build. I feel you are, you're in a lot of things because you're always such a, um, uh, an asset to everything everything i've ever seen you in is better because you're in it Aww. like i'm like oh okay now he's in it in this this scene will be good the rest of this will be trash and this will be good and of course it is it, 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 you always do that do no you, there's a I lot mean, of there's a your... lot of crap there's a lot of crap out there yeah <laughs> did you did you feel like you know was your goal always to kind of be like okay i'm, I'm gonna go in and i'm gonna try to become like this marquee name or or is it like you know hey at a certain point i'm just i'm going to be a working actor and i'm going to be able to do yeah. you know what was your was your standard sort of like um you know i'm going to i'm going to have a a good living off of this or was this like i got to go always for the brass ring you know uh ne never for the brass ring uh, okay. uh but I, I you know i i think it you know it evolved over time like at the beginning mm. it was like literally like i just need to make some money you know like i yeah, just yeah, need yeah, to yeah. make money and uh, uh and then you know at a certain point it was just like yeah i just want to uh i just want to work consistently enough to pay rent you know and yeah, then and yeah. then I got married and I was like, oh, I just want right. to, you know, to and then I had a kid and, and uh, you know, it kind of like, you know, I just wanted my, my goals kind of changed a little bit. But it, I think ultimately the through line was it was always like. I, I really just want to have as much fun as possible in this business. And, yeah. and to me, mm -hmm. fun, fun meant uh you know doing new things trying new things mm -hmm. working uh, you know as much as possible and and uh cuz cuz not working sucked you know but uh yeah. just working and and uh um working and you know now it's at a point where it's like oh i just want to work with people i like i actually like have yeah. that that possibility you know where i could actually work with people i like you know because i'm right i'm too old to work with people i don't like at this point so you know mm. it just like kind of always kind of mm. changed but i think it was always throughout to like have fun and just try to be happy and sane and not depressed like that was really like the 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 through line yeah 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 i feel that is definitely something i mean at least from what i can tell in the entertainment business like working with people you like is is like so rare it's like such a like a luxury almost you know because there's just yeah I don't know. it seems like it seems like there's a lot of 
weirdness. That's because there's, there's a lot of annoying comedians. That's why, Mike. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. One day I don't have to do this podcast anymore. That would be amazing. <laughs> Me. This uh, fucking podcast. Yeah, but the cool yeah. thing now is, like, the industry is, uh, has has changed enough that it's, like, I could I could work with, like, my friends who are Asian and and you know and thrive you know like i don't mm. like like always be my maybe for example it's like i don't it's like because when i first started it was like you couldn't expect any sort of success in this business without yeah. uh, a, a white person kind of you know kind of dictating right. things you know mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and uh it's still that it's still that to a degree but uh but there's like a little more it's it's opened up it's it or it's starting to open up a lot more mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah no i love yeah. that I, f- I do feel too when you know just to go back to that movie for a second when it came out and I mean, at least for me i was more excited about that than i was even about crazy rich Asians, just because i was like this is for us you know what i'm saying this is for like west coast california asians and if there's only eight thousand of us who like it and only eight thousand of us like it but we're gonna <laughs> really like it it's like definitely yeah, yeah. and if you don't if you don't like it, it's because you're not you don't know you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and that yeah, was yeah. really what what kind of triggered it for me you know so so we had a fr- film critic on last week who uh, is a film critic for um, Vulture and among many things. He's, he's Mike's friend, uh, shout out to Justin Chan. Justin Chang. And um, he said something really interesting about movies, and I wanted to ask you about it because you are in the MCU universe. And he was saying that, as a critic, he was saying that, um, you know, in Hollywood right now, it seems that there are all these, like, upcoming indie directors and actors who are amazing, and, like, the sort of measurement of making it is once Hollywood deems that you're good enough to make it, they give you... A Marvel movie, so it's like it's like you have to have a mar. It's like that's how you make that's how you know you made it in Hollywood is if you're in a Marvel movie. And as a film critic, he was saying he didn't like that because things don't have to be zero or an action movie and buildings blowing up or whatever. But uh, you yeah, know, you're yeah. you're you're in the MCU yeah. world. You work with those guys. You know how 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 has sort of doing being part of that Marvel universe something that's so like loved in this country? You know how how has that been like? for you and you know are you are you proud of it um you know are you excited to be a part of it or or you know i mean and and also do you disagree agree with kind of what our film critics uh was saying um i mean i don't i yeah i think i i mean i kind of agree in that it's just such a you know it's just such a machine you know that Mm -hmm. like Mm -hmm. like but i mean you could clearly like quote unquote make it and be you know uh, working and, and celebrate it and not be in the Marvel mm-hmm. universe, you know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, right. uh, there's plenty examples of that, um, and, and, of folks who probably won't even like want to do that, you know, and they're still like, uh, household names. But, uh, but, uh, as far as my involvement, I love it. I love it. Cause it's like, <laughs> you hear that Marvel? Uh, <laughs> yep. There you, go. you hear that? Well, I that feel was a, like that was uh, an alley-oop yeah. for you, my friend. You know what I like about no, your character I, is like, because I feel anytime there's a person of color in a Marvel universe, it has to be like, and I'm and I'm not even. This is not me ragging on you, Randall, but you you and I both know when they put a Asian guy or a black guy in a Marvel person, they, they have abs and they're the hottest. They better be young hot. babe, <laughs> right. guys with hot backs. You know what I'm saying? Like with Chadwick Boseman yeah, backs, and, yeah. and, and Shang Chi yeah. with Simu <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. right? Yeah. But you're always, yeah, always yeah, coming yeah. out of the shower. Exactly, yeah, always coming out. Exactly, always coming out of the shower. But your ca- character, yeah, yeah. Jimmy Woo, is like. He just like wants to be a. He's like a. To me, he's like a. It's not the best example, but he's kind of like an Asian Seth Rogen kind of. You know, he's kind of goofy. <laughs> yeah. he, you know, he's, he's, yeah. He has a good barbecue setup. You know. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. Um, uh, that's one of my favorite uh, yeah, things about yeah, that character. I mean, yeah. I mean, he's not a superhero, clearly. You know, mm-hmm. although uh, uh, I don't know. I, I I like to think uh, think that his super that his superpower is like kindness. You know. Uh, <laughs> 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 oh, but, uh, yeah. but he. Oh my God! <laughs> this is so our vibe right now, Mike. <laughs> This is so. This, this is, is so our vibe. This is our vibe. We're just. It's just three dudes at the at the Korean booking club talking about kindness. You know, We're yeah. eating eating in a, Doritos in a, in, a, yeah. in a dark corner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In a dark, dark corner. Uh, non-alcoholic. Uh, Shirley Temple. <laughs> uh, um, but yeah, like uh, I don't know. I I, I I do like that. You know, because uh, that's a, yeah. you know again. It's like I, I'm not I'm not built to be a, a superhero type of actor you know i'm like a, a, I see myself as more just like a kind of a, a 
I don't know, like a comedic uh, kind of utility right. guy in a lot of ways, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's like, yeah. it's, and, and that's fun to me, you know, that's fun. Again, just kind of follow the fun. That's what I try to do. And, yeah. and, uh, and this character is great because I, you know, it's, it's super fun to play like an FBI agent who's like, nice, you know, it's like not what you expect <laughs> from this industry, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Although, I mean, I'm going to have to say, Rand, I do feel like, first of all, you're, you got the facial hair. Okay, mm-hmm. you're killing it there. Mm-hmm. Thank you. And then you. I feel I don't know if this is I don't know how you know I I know a lot of my Korean bro friends. You know they got big frames. I feel like you could if you wanted to, you could pack it on. Mm. You could become like you got Kumail, Kumail potential. Dude. You got Kumail potential. Did you kid. ever do any like sports like that? You ever like you know you ever? Uh, yeah, you know I mean I, I've you know I've I've been out here for a while and I've been like exercising a lot and I I you know oh, I'm, I'm, I'm I'm cutting up. I'm cutting up. Yeah, I'm cutting up. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Here yeah. we go. So, Shang Chi, Shang Chi uh, two with Randall Park. With Randall Park. Yeah, no, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's Shang Chi's, uh, no. Shang Chi's uh, uncle well, uh, who has really good barbecue. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm loving. Yeah, this. no. Jimmy Woo's gonna be wearing tights in the next one. Watch. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I love it. You know, I mean, I know you're a big BTS person. Mm-hmm. Before the pandemic, I, me, and my wife had tickets to go see them in Jersey. They were oh yeah, do yeah. Tour, we did too. Right? We did too. Did you have and tickets the, too? Oh at my the Rose god. Bowl, yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm a, I'm a huge fan. For me, I think you've told the story about how you, you kind of got converted when you saw them at the Rose Bowl. Yeah, right? at the Rose Bowl. And, the fir- uh, yeah, the first I got time. converted when I, because I had, you know, I saw them coming. And what people, I think, I don't know if, if you can relate to this, but like what people don't realize is that I know, I've known about K-pop and J-pop for a long time. And, you know, all through, you know, high school even and then college. And I thought maybe these guys are just going to be kind of another you know uh not a flash in the pan but like it, just for a second on the american radar because mm. right before bts yeah. was psy right psy was right. was just that he was a big hot thing for a second and then he kind of like went away mm-hmm. and yeah, he, he was I kind of BTS, like a novelty thing i think to the american exactly audience. yeah mm-hmm. exactly i thought that was kind of like oh maybe this is bts gonna be like that but i saw them uh when they performed on uh saturday night live and i was like yeah. there's something really special about them yeah. they're so professional you know what I'm saying? They're like, yeah. it's weird how professionally hot they are, you know? <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. And um, yeah, I mean, you know, do you have a, do you have a favorite BTS person? Uh, I think, well, you know, it, 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 my bias, it, it, it changes yeah, over bias. time. It changes over time, but I, th- mm-hmm. I, I think V, mm-hmm. I think V, V is my guy. V, yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah. He's V is beyond. my guy. I, I love his voice. I think he's, he's like person. super handsome. He's so handsome. he's really funny in like a very understated way, you know, like yes. a, and, a, and he's yeah. kind of like weird funny, which I I, I yeah. really yeah, like. Yeah, he's a weird funny guy. He seems like a bit of a loner by nature, which speaks to me, Ooh. you know. Like, <laughs> he can uh, join us in that yeah. corner. He's, he's got the bag of Doritos. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, bag of Doritos, dark corner. He seems like that <laughs> that kind of BTS member. So so yeah, I think he's my guy. But you know, I mean, I I love them all. You can. They're all, yeah, it's hard I think, to so talented. I mean, like, yeah. unbelievably talented. And uh, and once you kind of get to know their personalities, that's when it really yes. starts becoming, like, magical, I think, you know, because it's like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It really is true. Yeah, I, right? I mean, yeah, for, for me, I like Jungkook for, for a, like, a, I mean, he's still called, like, my number one. You know, he's always going to be, like, my, my, my number one guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, um, he got the tattoos, recently? and he's like... Uh, right. Yeah, he's... Yeah, he's, like, he's He's, cool. he's just so he's good. Cool. And then, yeah. uh, but lately I've been really liking Suga. And that's, that's my wife's I, favorite. Yeah, I, I really like yeah. him because I feel that he's the dude who, um, you know, I don't want to g- get into the whole masculine feminine thing, but I feel he's kind of like the most masculine. He's the most like, he is not a pretty boy, you know, person. And he's yeah. supposed to be like a yeah. rapper and stuff like that. Um, yeah. and I've been watching because like right now they're kind of releasing a lot of, you know, very poppy things, which is, which is totally cool. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's the thing. Yeah. And I've, it's been funny to watch Suga kind of like go along with it. And <laughs> yeah, see, yeah, I, totally. I watch them all dance and every, you know, like V's like got his whole thing with, with the eye yeah. and, uh, and, and, you know, and, and Jungkook, like they know they're handsome. And then Suga's just like, okay, you know, like, yeah, I guess. Yeah. You know? Well, he's like the, mo- he's kind of like the, the most, I think, curmudgeonly of the group, which I really yeah. appreciate, you know, like <laughs> yeah. he's kind of the Larry David of, of TTS, which I like, <laughs> which I like. <laughs> 
<laughs> but yeah, it's like they, I, I don't know. I think they, I think they're really special. And you know, when I when I first heard of them, I I wasn't into it. I wasn't into K-pop or or th- them at all. I couldn't even tell the difference between some of them. You know, I was so dude. Like, I have to say, I was the same mm, way because I was just so yeah. like kind of brainwashed to it. Yeah, yeah, me and too. Now I'm like, just, there's no way. There's so there is there is like different as like you know uh, as 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 as, as anything you know so yeah it's yeah. A, they're very very different actually you know yeah yeah for sure brainwash is a word like i was seeing yeah. them through this like american you yes. know quote unquote lens which doesn't right. tell the difference between asian people obviously you know mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. and uh, uh but once i like uh got into them i was like oh my god these these guys are incredible yeah yeah. Um you ha- Yeah, it's 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 to the point even where I'm like I don't even know how they all get along. They seem so different. You know what I'm saying? Cuz they just yeah. each are they all have different strengths and stuff like that. They, it's anyways, I'm, we're getting into it. Yeah. yeah this they, is what I, love. I remember yeah. you had said like on David Chang's podcast you were you got into BTS and you felt really proud to be Korean and uh yeah, and, you know, and, yeah. you know, and originally you weren't <laughs> into them. And it's interesting cuz like okay, I don't know too much about BTS so I can't really pitch into this conversation, but I will uh, say no, you've been dead silent. <laughs> <laughs> but I will say <laughs> I will say that it has also I'm not a fan, but it has also affected my life because I think so like when I was in Vegas, uh we like went clubbing and um you know, hey, I, I sometimes I watch BTS music videos and I try to like dress like them cuz it's just nice to have Yes. Um, model your fashion um, off of another skinny Asian guy, you know? Because all my yeah, all my yeah, life, yeah. all my life, I'm looking at these like Abercrombie models who are like who've got big frames. I don't got big frames. Yeah. Okay. I I can I want to wear clothes that skinny Asian <laughs> guys wear. So I like yeah, yeah. I, I like I was wearing a shirt. I like I like tucked it into my like dress pants and stuff. And then um yeah yeah. yeah. I think if I did this in high school, my friends would have been like, oh man, you look so Asian right now. But they were like, yeah. dude, you you look like a BTS member. And I was like, oh, oh that's shit. so interesting that they said that. That is, that's, yeah. there's clearly a difference, right? Being like, oh, you're so Asian versus, oh, you're the most popular global pop band in the world. Like, thank you so much. That's you know right. So, that's so like, right. it definitely that's has it. had it's a, a compliment. It is a compliment. And I was, I just, yeah. I noticed that. And I thought that was so interesting. Just over 10 years, everything has changed, you know? We're going to play um, a game that we've been trying to play more often, and, and I think we're going to make a little feature of it. It's called uh, Asian, Not Asian, mm-hmm. The Game. Mm-hmm. And what we're going to do is we're going to bring up a couple of things uh, that we've been talking about. We're going to talk about, is it Asian or not Asian? This particular sort of, this thing we're going to, the, the, we, we got like three or four things. This, it's just a topic. And we're just gonna, just, it's, just, it's, just black, it's just black and white. Asian or not Asian? It's binary, zero or one. And you can explain, okay? and you you can wanna, explain it, yourself. You can explain yourself. Mm-hmm. I do feel there is always a right answer, but <laughs> we're, we're, we'll 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 decide that. Yes, and, um, and these are Randy, things. Ready to play? Yeah. Okay. Okay. okay, okay. First okay. one is the first. Th- is this Asian or not Asian? White suits. <laughs> <laughs> it's not Asian. <laughs> <laughs> it's not Asian. Black suits, Asian. Mm. Oh yes. Yes, mm. black suits are very Asian. You know what? Okay, that's good. How, uh, I'm, yeah. I'm gonna have to say it is Asian because in Hawaii, you, are, you think so? Because in Hawaii, a lot of Asians get married on the beach, and they're always wearing white suits. Oh, that's true. Mm. That is true. But it, that but I, true. but I could see from your experience why you would think it's not Asian because nobody else is wearing. Uh, yeah, it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's forever. You know, I mean, trauma comes Smart. with that, and it's just what I will believe for the rest of my life. <laughs> Um, all right, uh, Fumi, you want to take the next one? Yes, um, this one is physics. Is physics Asian or not Asian? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, my, my personal experience with physics will, would say that it's not Asian because <laughs> I'm Asian and I couldn't pass it. You know, I, I couldn't pass the first yeah. day. The first day. It wasn't even a test. Yeah, yep. Just, just the class. First day. Fuck that. <laughs> but, uh, but I would say... It, Stereotypically, uh, I think one would say that it is Asian, but uh, but because we're breaking stereotypes, I will say it's not Asian. Yo, mm, there you go, mm, there you mm, go. All yeah. right, Fr- you heard it here, frictionless plane. So, hey, hey. Uh, how about <laughs> all right? How about this one? Is this a- is is this Asian or not Asian? Kindness. <laughs> <laughs> the concept. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the character traits of kindness is that Asian? There is a right or wrong answer. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I would say that uh, 
Yeah, the, the, the trait of kindness is definitely Asian, I think. Uh, oh, yeah, you I, think so. I, I, but I don't think in a, in a weakness way. You know, I, no, hey, no. this yeah. kindness just, is not weakness, but I mean in the ultimate strength sort of way, I think. Mm, yeah. Interesting. Um, interesting. I'm going to have to, yeah, I'm going to say it's not Asian. It is, Asian <laughs> people are so mean. We're so mean to each other. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, you know, uh, yeah, no, that's true. I mean, that, shit, that, that, Randall, I mean, yeah, you know, just think about those three, you know, three girls. Say, say, <laughs> say no, say, say no to the hand or whatever the phrase is from the 90s. That's not right. the kindness right there. <laughs> that's true, but I mean, if you think about it in a way, they were kind of saving me from a really bad, hu- possibly humiliating experience of, of dating them, and and uh, and being who knows, I could have ended up dating one, and it would have just been a nightmare because oh, true. Uh, because she would expect me to be wearing black all the time. <laughs> yes, and, <laughs> yep. and that's not what so you do. Con- that's not your thing. No, that's she would constantly that's be putting her hand in my face. It would be. <laughs> It wouldn't be uh, it wouldn't be a, a fun time for me. So I think she was doing me a favor. Yeah. So I don't that, know. That All makes right. sense yeah. because uh, that, that's a lot of foresight and foresight is very Asian. So that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And, 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 yeah, yeah, for sure. For there sure. we go. And okay. uh, the, the last one here, uh, bag of Doritos. <laughs> this Asian or not Asian? Is that Asian or not Asian? <sighs> All flavors included. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Right. I think it's a, I, I think it's a very specific uh, strain of Asian. Uh, uh, it's definitely my strain of Asian. I mean, I, I, it is. What a, kind of Asian and, are you? I'm a Doritos oh, Asian. Doritos. Yeah. I'm a Doritos. I'm a, I'm a Doritos Asian. And I think uh, I would say the more kind of uh, I don't know, the more um, uh, uh, kind of homey. Down, kind of uh, neighborhoody yeah, type of Asians, yeah. you know, Ooh, which there are oh, Culver City yeah. Asian. Yep. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'd say I'd say things like uh, a bag of Doritos, Taco Bell. Um, oh shit, Taco uh, Bell. You know, you're Taco yes. Bell Asian. Okay. Uh, yeah. Taco Bell. Yeah. Taco Bell. Uh, Asian. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Things like that. Uh, that you know that that's what we came up on. So so. Amen. Uh, Amen. Asian uh, to okay. that extent. Very, very that uh, that's that's our game. Here's a bonus question, just to, to round it out. If you had to go clubbing right now, if we were, if I was like Randall, we're going booking. Get in the Integra and let's do this. What <laughs> what is your outfit? What is going to be your outfit? Now, this now, time? yes, now, now. Um, gosh, what, I think you know, it you're going to be, be on TikTok. People are going to be like, oh my god, Randall Parks at the club. You know, it's going to be you're going to be yeah, all yeah, over yeah, Snap, yeah. you know, whatever Snapchat and Instagram. What's your outfit? Uh, uh well you know i think just to uh honor my my past (laughs) (laughs) i think i would wear the brightest (laughs) loudest white imaginable guy get your revenge it's a revenge white suit Uh, he's got a a white fedora yeah with a white fedora exactly with a white fedora and 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 walking it like an all white dog like a uh, like a like a like a big like a puffy dog. Yeah. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. All yeah. right. That's amazing. Well, we just wrote um, "Always Be My Maybe Two just now, <laughs> and so that is going to be it. Amazing, Randall. Um, thank you so much for doing the podcast. We had so much fun. Um, is oh, there crazy? That was that was super fun, man. Thank is, you both. Is there anything you'd like to plug or have our listeners uh, check out? Uh, I mean, just the Asian, not Asian podcast. I whoa. Mean, it, <laughs> whoa, wow. whoa, 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 <laughs> wow, no that's one's ever really, done that. That's, that's really wow. about You're the it. first. There's, you're, that's, 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 yeah. that's kindness right there. I get it. I get that's it. kindness. Yeah. That's right. That's yeah. right. That's kindness, wow. man. You know, we've had, that's we've it. had Pulitzer Prize winners and they didn't do that. No. <laughs> no, no. Shout out to you. My God. Um, yes, that's amazing. And you can also. Yeah, no, that was so fun. So, so fun. Amazing. And you can find us on all the social media at Asian Not Asian Pod. I'm also on there at the Fumi Abe. That's T H E F U M I A B E. And you can find uh, me on Instagram at Nice Pants Bro. Um, please join our Patreon at patreon.com slash Asian Not Asian Pod. Leave a review if you're an iPhone user. And Mike, ha- uh, we're doing another Hack City comedy show, I believe, August 12, right? Is that right, Mike? August 12th? Uh, no, August 21st. Sorry, August I lied. 21st. August 21st will be Hack City in uh, Union Hall at uni hall in brooklyn so uh there'll be a ticket link uh in this episode description or just go to our instagram and click on the bio link um randall at the end of the podcast you know especially when we have a comedian on mike and i always like to say hey man we'll see you around in the scene um in your case 
um, if you see us in the we'll scene, we'll see you th- in that, the Marvel universe. Yeah, we'll see. The- <laughs> I, I also think, like, because you're a movie star, if you see us in the scene, it means something has gone really wrong. So I hope, Very wrong. I, I hope yeah. that I don't see, see you. I actually hope I never it's see like, you. It's like Matt Damon's character in uh, Goodwill Hunting. We hope to never see yeah. you. <laughs> we hope we never see you again. But this. But is- honestly, though, I mean, hey, man, you know, Fumi's going to be in LA. You know, if you're ever in New York, please. Say hello, oh, man. And, I'd love to. I'd you know? love to. I'd love to uh, grab a bite with you guys. Yeah, for sure. Oh yeah, and we got, we absolutely. Crazy. We got a stand up show. We're gonna wear too, white you, suits. We're all, let's we're all, all wear white suits, suits oh, and go yes. clubbing. That would be. We'll, that we'll would share be a bag of Doritos. <laughs> that would be amazing. Yes. Yeah. Let's yes. do it. Let's amazing. do it. Amazing. Amazing. Um, okay. All right. All right. Listeners, we love you. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.